Now, I know I've talked to you guys so much about Resident Evil 7 and how much I love it as a horror game. But I want to talk to you guys today about a very specific part from the beginning of the game. You see, it happens during your first encounter fighting the infected in the game there, the molded. Now this moment is already like on an emotional level, very tense, and I'll let you explore the game and figure out why yourself. However, there is a portion in which you get your hand skewered to a wall with a screwdriver. Now you get a prompt to start pulling that shit out of your hand, and as you get this prompt, the infected comes out holding a chainsaw. Now at this point, especially if it's your first playthrough, you're gonna start button mashing. You button mash and they keep getting closer, and closer, and closer, until you get out your arm at the last minute, only to have them saw your arm clean off of your body. Now for a lot of people, myself included, this could have probably been seen as a game over, like, oh, I didn't button mash hard enough. But then the game continues. You get up, and you still need to fight for your life. You pick up your severed hand, you find a handgun, and all of a sudden, you have to go up against this chainsaw-wielding maniac, moving slower than you were moving before, and you have to reload with a single hand. It is perhaps one of the toughest, most tense encounters I have ever experienced in a video game. And all of this got me thinking. Games should let us suffer injuries more. There's nothing like having power that you have stripped away from you and still having to deal with. Think about it, how many games do you play where you get used to your movement set, you get used to your powers, your abilities, your tools, and then, you know, you die, but then you restart the section and you go again and you slowly learn how to use these tools better. If you lost these tools on death or just throughout the game, all of a sudden the game would get significantly harder. Failure would have much more of a meaning. You would be tense, you would be afraid, you would think more about the potential consequences of what you're going to do, rather than just brute forcing it every time you die. Resident Evil 8 does this again, not in as intense of a way, however towards the beginning of the game, Ethan gets part of his hand chewed off. And throughout the game, even though this doesn't really affect your aptitude or skill, it's a constant reminder of the consequences of getting up close to these, you know, monsters you're fighting. So it's not even that you need to implement this on a mechanical level, however, just like having an injury or having something there constantly reminding you of the danger is pretty freaking tense. I mean, think of even classic Resident Evil. If you're on low health and you have no healing items and you haven't saved in a while, that walk through the mansion, through the police station, or through Raccoon City is going to be one of the most tense moments of gameplay ever. But just take a look at this. I of course immediately related this experience to Metal Gear Solid 5. Now when the marketing for Metal Gear Solid 5 was coming out, one of the most interesting aspects to me was the idea of playing as this wounded soldier, as this broken man, and having to work your way up to being big boss again. The trailers really showed Venom in the hospital being very helpless. And all of a sudden in gameplay, you saw him with all these like abilities to climb, to run, to seek you see anything. So I thought to myself, wow, the progression to that point must be really cool. The problem is that progression is non-existent. You see, the game starts off really strong with you waking up in this hospital and then all of a sudden it's under attack and you're having to hide under beds, blend in with bodies, and escape this force that's just dead set on massacring everyone there just to find you. Even when you get a gun, you still feel feeble, you can't see QC, you can run but there's not many places you can run to. You can reload your weapon but you're very limited to like how you can use it. Now of course Phantom Pain has to up and ruin this by allowing you to tank shots as soon as you get a gun. 
However, that beginning section of this hospital area, where getting caught means death, is the most tense stealth experience I've ever really had in a game. So imagine, you start off this way, you can't take as many hits, you can't see QC, you have all of these drawbacks, you get into the open world, instead of Ocelot just being like, oh here's an arm and some steroids, you have to deal with this shitty hook arm that disables the usage of certain like two-handed weapons. You have to stick to pistols and SMGs at the start of the game. You crawl really slow. You can't climb. You can't, you know, do the really cool roll. Instead, it damages you. Now imagine as you go throughout the game, you find the guy that develops your arms, you go on missions, you can have a familiarity system similar to Red Dead where you get better with certain weapons, you can have certain arms built for allowing Venom to do CQC better. As you go throughout the game, you'll be able to go up against harder and harder enemies with CQC. Let's say towards the beginning, you'll only be able to do guys that are unsuspecting, but later on, you'll be able to do all the crazy shit you can do in the game already. Let's say towards the beginning of the game, if like you take too much of a fall, you get like that like broken leg animation, but instead of just being able to shake it off, you actually have to limp around for the rest of the mission. Have it at the beginning of the game where you constantly need to get back to mother base and get medical attention. Yeah, and another way you could use mother base on a mechanical level. There's just so much you could do with slowly having to work your way up to being able to take a hit, to being able to climb to being able to use shotguns and assault rifles and complex heavyweight weaponry. You could have buddies that you really rely on on the start, but then become better at solo infiltration later on. This whole idea of being this wounded man and becoming a big boss could have made Phantom Pain so much more interesting. The open world could have had plants and items utilized for taking care of yourself when you were in that weaker state. Games should let you be injured Games should let you deal with physical consequences that you need to overcome, that you need to get used to. Have your reloads and have your abilities get better not by simply pressing a button on the iDroid, but through you struggling with the mechanics of trying to figure out how to reload these guns with different arms. And the more you reload guns, the more you seek you see, the more you climb, the better you get at it. But enough about talking about phantom pain and missed opportunities because oh, that's just such a negative mindset. Another game that does the idea of injury affecting gameplay really well would be The Last of Us. You see, in the winter section, Joel has sustained a serious injury in his abdomen. And as such, when you start playing as him, you are slower. You take damage much more, meaning that like close range engagements are a big no-no and Joel will constantly be grunting, and you'll feel his injury in every movement, whether you're vaulting over cover, aiming down your like weapon sights, or trying to run away from gunfire. It's one of the most tense sections in the game, and while it doesn't last very long and Joel gets back into the swing of things within like the next chapter, this part is made special because of the simulation of that injury. So yeah, this isn't so much a video essay as it's me talking about something that could be, or has the potential to be, a serious game influencing mechanic. Let us be weak. Let us have injuries. Let us have to overcome something. Because when we really have to overcome something, we really feel like we've earned the victories we have. And every time I play Phantom Pain and I'm just, you know, no scoping people with like the Trank rifle and breezing my way through the entirety of it. All I can really think about is, damn, if this felt earned, I don't think I'd have as much of a problem with it. Anyways, this has been Pliskin, over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.